What's happening guys, my name's Nicholas Renat and in this video we're going to be building our very own sign language detector. And we're going to be doing that using the TensorFlow Object Detection API and Python. But let's take a deep look as to what we're going to be going through. So in this video we're going to go from start to finish in order to build our sign language detector. So first up we're going to start out by collecting our images using Python and OpenCV. Then we're going to label them using the label image package. Then what we're going to do is we're going to re-leverage some of the code that we wrote for our other object detector and build a sign language detector using transfer learning and the TensorFlow object detection API. Then last but not least, we're going to be able to detect different sign language poses in real time. So let's take a look as to how all of this is going to fit together. So first up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our very own webcam to collect images that we're going to use to train on. So those images are then going to be passed to label image and we're going to start drawing detection boxes against our different sign language poses. Once we've done that, we're going to use transfer learning against our TensorFlow object detection API to be able to train an object detector. And then last but not least, we're going to be able to use Python and OpenCV to detect those in real time. So ideally, what you should end up with is a real time object detection device that uses your webcam and can detect different sign language poses. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so let's get to building our real time sign language detector. Now there's seven key steps that we need to go through. So let's take a quick look at those. So first up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cloning our real-time object detection repo and you can see that in the background there. So we're going to be able to leverage all of the transfer learning, all of the pre-processing and all of the training code inside of there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to collect some images and for that we're going to write a little bit of code with OpenCV to be able to leverage our webcam to collect images for training. We're then going to set up label image and label our images for sign language detection. Then we need to update a couple of lines of code in our Jupyter Notebook inside of our repo. Train, we can then update our checkpoints and then detect. So these are really easy steps and our training step is pretty easy. We just write a command and let it run. So let's go on ahead and do it. So first up, we're gonna start out by cloning our repository. So we can just copy this link here and go into a command line. So if you're in a Windows machine, then you'll just be opening up a command prompt if you're in a Mac or Linux machine, you'll just be opening up a terminal. So in this particular case, the command that we want to issue is git clone and then paste in our link. And so this will go to GitHub, grab that repository and put it inside of a directory. In this case, we're inside of our D drive, so it's going to appear in our D drive and you can see it there already. So let's give that a couple of seconds and it should clone. And you can see it's now done. So we can now open up our repository and take a look at what's actually in here. So if you've watched the real-time face mask detection video, then this is the exact same code. We're just going to be updating it in order to build our sign language detector. So if we actually open this up, you can see that we've got one Jupyter notebook there already, and we've also got a folder called TensorFlow. Within our folder called TensorFlow, we've got some scripts, and in here, this is going to be our script to create our TF records. We've also got a workspace folder and in here we've got a little bit more information. So we've got annotations and there's nothing in there yet, but we'll talk about that in a sec. We've also got a folder called images, but again, there's nothing in there because we're going to collect them. We've also got a folder called models and in there again, there's nothing because we're going to set that up. And then in our pre-trained models folder, we've got a pre-downloaded model from the TensorFlow model zoo. So in this case, we've downloaded the single shot detector mobile net V2 FPN Lite 320 by 320 Coco 17 TPU model. So this is a pre-trained model that allows us to perform a task called transfer learning and train our model a whole heap faster. So now what we're going to do is go on to our next step. So let's take a look at our to-do list now. So if we take a look, we've cloned our repo so we can mark that as done. The next thing that we want to do is actually go and collect our images. So let's go on ahead and start doing that. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new Jupyter terminal and we're going to go into the folder that we just created. So if we take a look, it's called real-time object detection. So that's the same folder that we just went and cloned down. And if we take a look, you can see that it's called real-time object detection. So we're going to jump into there and create a new Jupyter notebook. So to do that, we just need to hit new and then Python 3. 
So this is going to give us a new Jupyter Notebook to work with. And now we're gonna write a little bit of code that allows us to collect images using our webcam. So first up, what we're gonna do is import some dependencies. So we've got four key dependencies. So these are OpenCV, UUID, OS, and Time. So each one of these dependencies is gonna make it a little bit easier for us to collect our images. So let's go on ahead and import those. Okay, so those are our dependencies imported. So we've imported four things, as you can see there. So import CV2, this is really open CV. We've also imported OS, so this is just going to help us work with file paths. We've also imported time, and we're actually gonna use this to take a little bit of a break between each of the images that we collect. So we can actually move our hands in order to collect different angles for our sign language uh, model. We've also imported UUID, so we're gonna use UUID to name our image files. Now, the next thing that we wanna specify is our images path. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, so we've now gone and specified our images path. So in this case, we're just gonna put it inside of a folder called TensorFlow workspace images slash collected images. So if we go and take a look at our folder, what we're effectively going to have is inside of TensorFlow, inside of workspace, inside of images, we're going to have a new folder called collected images. So this is where all the images that we collect using OpenCV are going to reside, uh, initially at least. So the next thing that we need to do is define the labels that we're gonna collect and how many images that we're going to collect. In this case, we're going to have five different labels. So these are going to represent the different sign language poses that we're actually going to collect. So in our particular case, we're going to do five. So the first one is going to be hello. The second one is going to be yes. The third one is going to be no. The fourth one is going to be thank you. And the last one is going to be I love you. So we're going to train labels for each one of those poses. So let's go on ahead and set up an array of all of our labels and a variable to hold the number of images we're going to collect. Okay, so in this case, what we've gone and done is we've set up two variables. So the first one is called labels, and this just represents each one of the poses that we're going to collect when we collect our images. So we've got one for hello, one for thanks. In this case, it's actually going to be thank you, but that's fine, we just need a single word to represent it. Yes, no, and I love you. And then we've also specified the number of images that we're going to collect. So in this case, we're going to collect 15 different images, so we'll probably use 13 of those for training and two of those per class for testing. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually go and collect our images. So let's go on ahead and write that code that allows us to collect it. All right, so that's quite a fair bit of code, but let's actually take a step back and take a look at what we've written there. So first up, what we're going to do is loop through each one of our labels within this array. Then what we're going to do is create a directory for each one of these labels. So ideally what we should have is five folders inside of collected images, so one for each one of these labels. Then what we're going to do is start our video capture, and to do that, we've used the cv2.videocapture method. So this is going to initialize our webcam. Now you might need to play around with this depending on what device number your webcam represents. So in this case, for my computer, it's zero, but sometimes you need to play around. So in this case, on my PC, it's zero, on my Mac, it's two. Um, so play around with that if it's not working, but also drop me a mention in the comments below if you have any trouble at all. Then we're going to print out that we're collecting images for the first label or whatever label we're up to. We're going to sleep for five seconds. So this is going to give us some time to get into position in order to collect our images. Then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the number of images that we want to collect. So in this case, we want to collect 15. We're going to set up our capture and specifically we're interested in our frame here. So this is going to represent our actual image. And then we're defining our image name. So this is the entire path to our image. So in this case, it's going to be our images path, which is this up here. Well, to actually join this together, we're using os.path.join. And the first part of that path is this images path then the label, because remember we've created a folder per label, then the name of the actual file is going to be the label, dot, and then we're passing through some string formatting to pass through our unique identifier. So this is going to make sure that each of our images has an individual name and we don't duplicate. Then what we're doing is we're using the cv2.imwrite method to go on ahead and write it to that directory. And we're also going to show it to the screen so we can take a look at what we've gone and collected. 
Then we're gonna sleep for two seconds to make sure we can get into another pose. And then we're going to finally release our video capture. And if we've got any issues, we can hit the break key and break out of that. Now in this particular case, I haven't actually run it yet. So I'm gonna take down the green screen, run it and start collecting our images. And then we'll take a look at what we've got. Alrighty, so green screen's down. So let's go and start collecting our images. So for the labels that we're actually collecting, so hello is going to be this pose, thanks is going to be this pose, yes is going to be this pose, no is this, and I love you is this. So what you're going to see is as I'm collecting these images, I'm moving my hand pose and I'm using different hands. So this is going to boost the likelihood that our model is able to detect each one of these poses. So let's go ahead and start collecting them. And we've got a bug there. This should just be a single ampersand. And there we go. All right, so hello's first. Oh, image name is not defined. What have we done there? This should be this. Let's try that again. Oh. Okay, so that looks like hello is done. Let's drag this over. And now we're collecting images. Oh, we can't actually see for thanks. So thanks is this. Okay, so that looks like thanks is done. Now we'll wait for our next. So next is going to be yes. So it's going to be in this particular format. All right, there we go. Switching hands. Okay, that looks like yes is done. Now no, so no is going to be this. Cool, that's no done, and now I love you. Awesome, so that's all of our images collected. So you can see that we're now done. Now let's just close this. And if we go into our images folder now, what we should do, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of images. So remember what we said is that inside of our workspace, so within TensorFlow, workspace, images, collected images, we're going to have a number of folders. So one for each one of our labels. In this case, we've got one for hello, one for I love you, one for no, one for thanks, and one for yes. Now what we need to do is go on ahead and label these. So what we're going to do in order to label these images is use the label image package. So the label image package basically is an open source package that allows you to label images for object detection really easily. Now we're not going to go through the entire steps to set this up. So if you want to take a look, I'll include a link to the description above. So we did this in the full blown object detection tutorial. It's only a couple of steps. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring that in and then we're going to start labeling our images. Alrighty, so I've got label image inside of our TensorFlow package. Now again, if you want to take a look at how to set this up, I'll include a link somewhere above to the video where we actually went through and did all of this. Again, it was only a couple of steps to set it up. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use it to label our images. But first up, what we're going to do is we're going to step into our workspace step into our images and our collected images. And we're just gonna take all of these out of their individual folders and just put them inside of collected images. So that way, when we're working with a label image, we can point to one single directory and label them from there. So let's grab the rest and yes. And then what we can do is just delete these folders. Perfect, so ideally what you should now have is a folder with all of your captured images. So now what we need to do is start up label image and start labeling these images. So to do that, we just need to go into our label image folder. And then what we need to do is run the Python command to start it up. So that is just Python label image.py and this is going to start up label image. So you can see that we've got it up here, it opened up on the other screen, so I'm just dragging it over. Now, what we need to do is just open up our image directory and then change our save directory. So to do that, we just open our directory first up, and then remember our images are inside of real-time object detection, TensorFlow, workspace, images, and collected images. And then we wanna change our save directory, so we go change save directory, 
And again, we're going to point it to the same directory. So real-time object detection, TensorFlow, workspace, images, collected images. And so now what we need to do is label our images. So specifically, what we're going to be labeling is each one of our sign language poses. And in this case, you can see that this one's hello. It's not exactly pointing to the camera, but that's good because it's going to give us more variety. In order to label, all we need to do is hit the command W and this will give us our labeling tool. And then we can hit A and D to pass through between each one of these images. Now, a key thing to note, whenever you're working with label image, just make sure that you've got auto save mode on. It's just gonna make sure that it saves each one of your annotations. So let's go on ahead and start labeling. So we're just gonna hit W and then we're going to draw a square around that pose. And then we're going to type in the name of the label. In this case, it's hello and we can hit okay. And you can see there that as soon as we've gone and typed in that command, we're going to have a little label box appear up here. Then we can go to our next image and do the same thing. Cool, and you sort of get the idea. So now what we're gonna do is go through each one of our different labels and label them. So remember, we've got five different labels to do. So hello, yes, no, thank you, and I love you. So let's go on ahead and power through those and then we'll take a look at our results. Okay, so now we're up to a different sign. So in this case, we're just going to change our label. So in this case, it's going to be, I love you. And so what we're going to do is each time we're labeling a different sign, we're just going to make sure that we pass through the right label. So in this case, this one's, I love you. So we'll just tick, I love you. And then we're gonna do the same for the other images. Alrighty, and that is our labeling done. So let's go and take a look at our results real quick. So in this case, if we go back into our collected images folder, you can see that we've got not only the image, but we've also got these XML files. So if we bring that over, so you can see that inside of these XML files, you've got everything that you need to represent your objects. So specifically, you've got the folder that your image is in, the file name, the path to that particular file, its source, the size of that image. So in this case, you can see that we've got our width, our height, and our depth. We've also got our object. So this is the most important component. So we can see the label. So in this case, this label is hello. And if we go and take a look at the attached image, you can see that in fact, that this does represent a hello sign. You can also see where the bounding box is. So this is really, really critical. So this is what our object detection model is going to be trained on. And you can see that we've got a whole bunch of others as well. So if we scroll all the way down, we've got quite a fair bit of data. Now what we need to do is go and split this up into a training and testing partition. So this allows our model to train on a certain set of data and then test and evaluate on a separate partition. So this ideally helps reduce the chance of overfitting. Now again, you can use a slightly more scientific method of sampling and selecting what's going to be in the training and testing partition. In this case, we're just going to select a bunch and throw them into our training and select the rest and put it into our testing folder. So let's close this and we can minimize our command prompt. We're going to open up a new window in our drive. So if we go into our real-time object detection folder, into TensorFlow, into our workspace and our images, so you can see that we've got two folders under here already. So training and testing. Now there's nothing inside of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a portion of our files and put those into our training folder. And then we're gonna choose the rest and put it into our testing folder. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll do it by class. So if we go to hello, we'll grab everything up to about here. So in this case, you can see that we're going to have one, two images for our testing partition. Now, when you're moving these into the training and testing folders, you need to make sure that you move both the image and the XML annotation. So in this case, we're gonna grab all of these and you can see that we've left the annotations for the rest and put it into our training folder. Then we're gonna do the same for the other classes. Alrighty, so that's our testing bit set up. So you can see we've got a whole bunch of images plus the XML annotations. Now what we're going to do is just step into our testing folder and throw the rest in there. And we can delete this .git keep. So that just makes sure that we have a folder. All right, cool. So those are our images done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our Jupyter Notebook. So the one that came attached inside of our real-time object detection GitHub repo. And we're going to start setting up our pipelines. So in this case, what we need to do is just go into the Jupyter Notebook called tutorial.ipynb. 
and we're going to start running through this. But before we do that, let's take a look at our to-do list and see how we're going. So we've now collected our images, so we can mark that as done. We've also set up label image, so we grabbed that into our folder and used it. We updated our, or we labeled our images. Now what we're going to do is we're going to update our label map and we're going to train our model. So let's go on ahead and do those. So in order to work with this script, what we're going to do is we're just going to step through and make the necessary updates. In this case, our first cell is fine to execute. Now this particular cell that we've got here, so create label map, we need to make a few updates. Now the label map basically is a representation of all the different objects that you've got within your model. So what we're going to do is we're going to update this for the new labels that we've got. Remember we had no, yes, thank you, uh, I love you, and what was the other one? No, yes, and hello. All right, so let's go and update those. So the existing label map that we've got in here is just configured for our mask and no mask. So this is what we used for our real-time face mask detection. So again, if you wanna check out that video, I'll include a link somewhere up there, check it out. Uh, in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna update it for sign language. So let's include five different labels. And then we're going to have one label per class. So our first one's going to be hello. Our second one is going to be yes. A third one is going to be no. Fourth one is going to be thank you. And then the last one is going to be I love you. And we also just need to change these IDs. So just make them sequential. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we can run that. So in this case, we've now got a new label map. So now that we've executed this folder, what we can do is take a look at the results. So ideally what we should have is a new file called labelmap.pbtxt inside of our annotation folder. So this annotation path here is basically where our, all of our annotations, including our TF records are going to go. But again, if you want more detail as to how we wrote this code, by all means, check out the face mask video. It's all in there and all explained. In this case, we're trying to reuse some of the code that we already wrote. So if we go into desktop two, into annotations, you can see that we've now got a file called label map. And if we open that up, you can see that indeed it represents each one of our different labels. So we've got hello, yes, no, thank you, I love you, and each one of those IDs. So that's looking good. Now we can jump back in here. The next thing that we need to do is create our TF records. So whenever you're working with the object detection API, the way that it likes to be trained is using a TF record. So it's a special file format that specifically the TensorFlow object detection API uses. But what we can do in order to simplify the generation of those records is use that script that was included inside of the GitHub repository. So if we actually take a look in there, so if we go back into our so this is our top level folder. If we go into TensorFlow and scripts, we've got this generate TF record script. And this comes from the official TensorFlow object detection tutorial. So we're gonna leverage that in order to generate our TF records. Now, ideally when we run this script, what we should have is two additional files inside of our annotation folder, one called test and one called train. So these are going to represent the TF records for each of our different data partitions. So let's jump back into here and generate that. Now, in this case, we don't need to make any updates to this particular cell. So let's go and execute that. So we should ideally get a generated successfully script. Awesome, and you can see that that's run successfully. So we've successfully created the TF record file, TensorFlow workspace annotations train.record, and we've also created the second one. So successfully created the TF record file, TensorFlow workspace annotations test.record. Let's quickly take a look at our to-do list. So now what we've done is we've now updated our label map and we've also gone and generated our TF records. So in a couple of steps, we're actually gonna go ahead and train. So let's keep going through our Jupyter Notebook and we should ideally get to the step to train. So now what we're going to do is clone the official TensorFlow object detection library. So if we actually take a look, that is this folder here, or that is this GitHub repo here, and this basically gives us everything that we need in order to train. Now, if you need a bit more of a detailed guide to set up TensorFlow, I'd highly recommend this tutorial. So this is the official TensorFlow object detection tutorial. But again, I'll include all of the links into the description uh, below. So just check those out, all be there. Let's go on ahead and clone this. This might take a little bit of time, so we'll be right back. And we're back. So now that that's done, if we actually go and take a look again inside of our main repository, so again, let's start from the top. So if we go into TensorFlow, 
you can now see that we've got a models folder and this includes all of the TensorFlow good stuff and specifically the script that we're going to use to go on ahead and train our model. Now let's jump back into our Jupyter Notebook. There's a couple of key steps that we've got left to do. So the next thing that we need to do is actually go on and start setting up our configuration. So our configuration is basically going to be the set of steps and the model information that we're going to use to train our model. Now in this case, remember we already had that pre-trained model inside of our main repo, so we can just go and leverage that. So we're just gonna step through each one of those steps. So if we go and run these, this is going to create a new folder called my SSD mobnet, and it's going to take our existing configuration from our train model and put it into there. So now that we've run those two tells, if we go back and take a look inside of our workspace and inside of our models folder, we've now got a folder called my SSD mobnet. And you can see we've also got our template pipeline configuration. Now, if we go back into our Jupyter Notebook, we're just going to make a last couple of key updates to that. So we're going to import our dependencies. We're then going to grab our configuration path and open up our configuration. So this is our baseline configuration. Now, what we actually need to do, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a whole heap of paths that need to be configured. And we also need to change this number of classes figure here. So this number of classes should ideally be the number of different types of objects that you want your model to recognize. In this case, we've got five. So those represent each one of our signs in our label map. So hello, yes, no, thank you, and I love you. So we're just going to update it to five. So to update it to five, we just need to go to that first line, change that to five, and we're going to run this cell and run this cell. So this cell is sort of pre-configured to go and redefine each one of those paths that you need to step through. So we won't go into great detail, but I'll quickly explain what's here. So first up, we're updating the batch size. So this is how much data is processed within each epoch. Then we're also updating our fine tune checkpoint. So this is where our model is going to start training from. And this allows us to use a technique called transfer learning to be able to train a whole heap faster. We're then changing our checkpoint type to detection. We're changing our annotation path. So in this case for our training, and for our evaluation. And then we're also specifying where our TF records are. So in this case, where our train record and where our test record is. Then what we can do is go and write that out. So this is going to update our configuration. So now if we go back in, you can see that it's just gone and updated. So 1208, that's the current time, 1208. You can see that we've now gone and made those updates. Now all that's left to do is go on ahead and train our model and make those detections. So by running this cell here, you're going to get the Python script that you can use to train your model. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to change that last parameter from 5,000 to 10,000. So when I was training this previously, what I saw is that by training for about 10,000 steps, you got the best results. So now what we're going to do is copy this command and then open up a command prompt and then run this script. So this is now going to kick off our training process and start training our deep learning model. Now in this particular case, how long it takes is going to be very much dependent on the hardware that you've got available. So if you've got a GPU versus not having a GPU, in this case, what we're going to do is copy this command, go and run it in a command prompt or in a terminal if you're on a Mac and we'll be right back. So let's copy this, open up a command prompt, Drag that over and then we're going to go into our top level folder. So in this case called real time, let's take our blocks off. And then from here, this is where we can trigger our command. So if we paste it in, ideally what you should start to see is that our model will start training. And as soon as you start to see some loss metrics, so I'll show you that in a second, you know that your model is training successfully. But again, if you wanna go into more detail as to how we actually did all of this, by all means, Check out the face mask video. We went into great detail and actually took a look at how we were writing this code. Okay, and you can start to see our loss metrics have started appearing. So you can see here that in this case, we've got the step per or the time per 100 steps or training steps. And we've also got our first loss metric showing up. So in this case, it's 0.752. Uh, I've seen best results when we get the loss to around 0.18 to 0.15. So what we're going to do is let that train and we'll come back in 10,000 steps and see how our model's performing and actually start to make some real time detections. Alrighty, so you can see that our model has finished training. So we're all up, we've got a loss of about 0.099 and I ended up extending the training uh, to about 20,000 steps. So ideally this should give us the best possible likelihood of being able to detect sign language in real time. So now what we can do is just step back into our Jupyter Notebook and make a few key updates. 
So we've sort of got up to step six where we train our model and what we did is we took this particular command and we put it into our command prompt and ran that. The next couple of things that we need to do are just run these cells. So in this case, we're going to load some dependencies. Oh, it looks like we've got a dead kernel. Let's just restart that, right? So now we've restarted our kernel. Now the next thing, so again, we're just gonna import our dependencies. So those look all fine. Then the core thing that we need to do is update this checkpoint. So in this case, the latest checkpoint that our model generated was checkpoint 11. And you can see these inside of your models file. So in this case, the checkpoint that we needed was checkpoint 11. So we can run that to load our model. And this will load our model and regenerate it based on whatever we've gone and trained. And then below here, we've actually got our real-time detection. So all we need to do to spin up our real-time detection is to step through each one of those cells. So if we hit Shift and Enter and go through each one of those cells, what you'll get is a new Python pop-up that allows you to make real-time detection. So let's run through that. And because our cap hasn't generated yet, we can just delete this cell, that's fine. And ideally what you should get is a little pop-up. So let's wait for it to pop up. You can see the lighting's changed a little bit, so I've just opened some blinds to make it a little bit easier to make our detections. And you can see that we've got our detection screen here. And if we type out, put our hand up, let's point out the screen. So you can see that it's accurately detecting yes. It's detecting I love you. It's detecting thank you and hello. And it's also detecting no. So really quickly, we're able to make those detections and it can switch hands. If we put the green screen down, we can take a look at performance there. So hello, I love you, yes, and no. And thank you. Alrighty, so just to recap, so we captured our images using OpenCV, we then labeled them using label image, we then went through our pre-built Jupyter Notebook and actually went and trained our model, and right now you can see that we're making real-time detections. So as we're facing the camera, we're able to make detections in real time, and this could be deployed elsewhere if you wanted to. Uh, it's a fully pre-built model and you can take those checkpoints and work with them going forward. And that about wraps up this video. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I'm releasing future videos. And let me know how you went about building your sign language detector. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.